Today I'm going to do a tutorial on how to set up your grinder. The grind is actually one of the most important parts about brewing your coffee and what we're going to be talking about is how to adjust the grind size on your grinder for the coffee you have. The professionals will call this dialing in your coffee which means getting the size correct such that you get the most out of your coffee. So how do you adjust it? Well let's find out. Okay, so today we're talking about the grinder. If you're new to brewing coffee, learning how to use your grinder is one of the most important skills you're going to acquire early on. I'm going to start talking about the basics of what grinder to get, how to set it up, and then we're going to go a little bit into the theory of what you're trying to do when you adjust your grind size so that you can get the most out of the coffee when you bring it home. You might be wondering what grinder should you buy? I'm going to recommend that you go out and get a burr grinder and a good quality one. You can find what are called blade grinders where there's a metal blade that will spin and slice the beans, but it's not going to provide a good quality grind and I wouldn't recommend it for anything except for maybe French press. On the other hand, you can find entry level but high quality grinders that are $50 to $250 that have a burr grinder inside them. So for example, the Breville Smart Grinder Pro is $200 and it's been giving me very good results. I'll provide a link in the description below. Let's quickly walk through some of the basic functions on the grinder, just so you're familiar. Up top is what's called the hopper. This is where you put your beans. And actually on this particular unit, uh, the hopper can be removed. So the bottom locks in and you can see that the beans don't spill through. So if you wanna put them away for storage, it's super useful. The next most important thing you need to know about is the grind size. So on this machine, it's adjusted here and you can set it to either fine or coarse. This machine, since it's a smart grinder, it has a number of programmable features and the most important one is this one here, which lets you set the amount of time you're gonna grind for. So when you have a certain grind size and then you fix the time, what this will do is every time you tell this machine to grind, it will grind for 10 seconds, which will give you, let's say 15 grams of coffee at a particular grind size. So once you have your grind and your time set up, you can just hit this button and get approximately the same amount of coffee out every time. The last thing I'm gonna point out is this is the button that dispenses. If you press it quickly, it will dispense for the amount of time set on the counter here. You can also just hold it and you can manually dispense. So when you're setting up and you're getting your coffee ready, if you're off by a couple grams, you can just push in and manually dose a little bit more coffee. Let's get to the main topic, which is how to set up and dial in your grinder. Fundamentally, what we're gonna be doing is using the grind size as a knob to adjust the flavor of the coffee so that it tastes as good as possible. And what you'll find when you're brewing coffee is that you actually do need to do this because there are lots of variables involved in brewing coffee. And some of these variables may be off, which may lead to a taste in your coffee that doesn't seem quite right. Maybe it's bitter or sour or you know, tastes a little too acidic. And you're going to need to use your grinder as a tool to tune this coffee so that it tastes nice and balanced and tastes sweet and enjoyable. So what we're going to talk about today is how do you do this with a grinder? And the reason we use a grinder as our tool for adjustment is if you invest in a high quality grinder, it's one of the best, most reliable ways to make adjustments compared to these other variables. So what are the variables that affect how our coffee tastes? Well, it turns out there's quite a few, and here's some of the most important. What coffee beans you're using, when these coffee beans were roasted, how they were roasted, the temperature of water that you're brewing with, the amount of coffee you're putting in, the amount of water that you're putting in, and finally, what we're gonna be talking about, which is the grind size itself. Since each of these variables can affect the taste of our coffee, we're going to try and control as many as possible and not change them because trying to change some of these other things is quite difficult, whereas making adjustments to this knob here is much more precise and reliable. 
So let's talk about a couple concepts which will help us understand what happens when we turn this knob. The first concept I want you to understand is how extraction is going to influence the way that your coffee tastes. So let's think on a range from very under extracted coffee to very over extracted coffee. If your coffee is very under extracted, then when you taste it, you're going to notice that this coffee tastes kind of watery and sour and not very pleasant. On the other hand, if your coffee is over extracted, you're going to notice that this coffee is very bitter and it might taste kind of syrupy and unpleasant. So that's the relationship between the extraction of a coffee and its taste. The next concept I want to introduce you to is the relationship between the grind size and how the coffee is extracted. So it's useful to think again on extremes. If you have a very coarse grind, what's going to happen is as you pour hot water through the coffee, the grind size is going to be larger and there's less surface area and the water is going to flow through this coffee faster. On the other hand, if you have a very fine grind, then the particles are going to be very small, there's more surface to interact with, and the water is going to go through slower. So the coarse grind is going to lead to less extraction because of these effects, and the fine grind is going to lead to more extraction because of these effects. Okay, so to concretely see how grind size has an effect on the brew, we've put together a demo, and it's going to show you how the grind size will affect the brewing process, both in terms of the effect it has on the coffee and how fast uh, the brewing process takes place. So uh, first what I'm going to do is uh, get a very coarse uh, grind and we're going to get 20 grams of coffee out. So let's grind. Okay, that's 20. And now let's do the same thing, but we're going to go really fine here. This is one of the finest grind sizes this grinder has. You can hear it working. Okay. Um, so this is extremely fine. Okay, so here's the coarse grind. And here's the fine grind. In the coarse case, you can see that the size is very large and in the fine grind, the size is very small. All right, so now let's try taking boiling water and pouring it through the different grind sizes and seeing the difference on how they brew. I've got some water just off the boil here. And I'm going to start with the coarse coffee. All right, so I'm going to put in 150 grams of water and let's see how long it takes to brew through. As you can see at the coarse ground, it's going pretty fast. That's 30 seconds. And it's just about done. All right, now we're gonna do the fine coffee. So I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. I'm gonna put in 150 grams of water and we're gonna time how long it takes.
What you'll notice if you do this yourself is that because the coffee is so fine, it even starts to clump together and block even more water as it's going through. And now there's just like this wet reservoir of water that is a little bit stuck at the bottom. Okay, so that's a minute 30 seconds. Uh, whereas this one is only 30 seconds. So the next thing I wanna show you is the difference in the color between these two. You can see how much darker this coffee is than this coffee. And while the color doesn't matter exactly, what it says is that this has extracted much more content out of the coffee beans into the water than this has. So it's going to have an effect on our extraction. And that's what we need to know when we're trying to brew coffee. Let's take everything we've learned today and put it together so you can apply it for when you're brewing coffee at home. When you first come home with a new bag of beans, I'm gonna recommend three steps in order to figure out how to set your grind. The first step is to go online and find a recipe for the method that you're brewing. For example, if you're gonna be using a V60 pour over, you can go online and look for V60 pour over recipe. What this will provide is a set of rules of thumb for each of the different variables in your coffee making. For example, it will give you water temperatures, a rough grind size, water in, water out, etc. What you can do then is set up according to this recipe without worrying too much about each of these pieces. The second step is doing your first brew with this recipe. And what you're gonna be doing here is just going for it, don't worry too much, just brew a cup of coffee, but then importantly, tasting this coffee and figuring out exactly where things lie in terms of the taste. So the real key is using the concepts that we've talked about earlier and applying them here. For example, if you taste the coffee and you say, wow, this is really sour, you probably haven't extracted enough flavor out of your coffee. On the other hand, if you taste it and you say, this is really bitter, you've over-extracted your coffee. And now because you understand how this knob changes that extraction, you can make adjustments. The third step is to repeat and adjust and dial in this grind over the next couple of coffees that you make in order to get the best taste possible. And it is really important to realize that you're not gonna get it right the first time. It's probably gonna be two, three, four times before you're saying, wow, I've really hit it with this particular coffee. And if you go in with that mindset and you pay attention and are really intentional about what you're doing each time, by the fifth cup of coffee you're making, it should taste really, really good. Keep in mind that as a coffee ages, it will adjust slightly in terms of how it is brewing. So you might wanna keep adjusting as you go, but you are now equipped to maximize the flavor of your coffee by first paying attention to what you're tasting and second, by making the adjustments, knowing how those adjustments will influence the taste. So I hope this has been a useful tutorial on how you can be better equipped to understand what's happening when you're changing your grind size. And when you bring home your coffee, you now have the information you need in order to get the best taste out of your coffee possible. Please share it and I hope it was useful to you and I'll see you next time. Okay, now I'm gonna show you 